Greetings. We'll get started at five after. You can add your name and any agenda items to the meeting notes, which I posted in the Zoom chat. They're also in the CNCF CNF working group Slack. Greetings. If you didn't see already, um, the meeting notes and posting them to the Zoom chat. We'll get started in a couple of minutes at five after. You can add your name and any agenda items to the meeting notes. Cal, would you mind putting your note as a, I guess, an additional item? I think that is a list of um, the wish list items that Ian is suggesting. Thanks, Tal. If you don't have any, if you don't have access to the Google Doc, um, it is open, but if you can't reach it because of firewalls or whatever, you can post um, your name and any topic that you'd like to discuss in the Zoom chat or in Slack. You can add that or just speak it out loud. All right, it's five after. Hey, Ann, 
So you joined. Any walk-in um, topics before we get started? You can add them to the notes, which are posted in Slack and in the Zoom chat, or say them out loud or add them to the Zoom chat if you don't have access to the Google Doc. All right. So the first item here is uh, you're saying it's this use case wish list. I'll give you the mic. Okay. Um, yeah. So the reason I put this up is in part because we've been doing a lot of admin and I thought it would be useful to get to the point of what we're actually supposed to be doing, which is use cases turning into best practices via probably a few design documents. Um, and I thought one way of getting us moving on that was basically to put a wish list up so that anyone who wanted to attack any of the problems had um, a place to start if they had five minutes and they wanted to have a go at something. Um, and had no no imagination. Um, so um, I'm not remotely suggesting these are all of them. They're just really the first ones that came to mind. Um, anyone who has any thoughts on it, who obviously I'm not going to say no, would well like to take any of them on or would um, like to add any more they think are worth mentioning to it, then um, now you, now's your chance and I will find a better home than in the meeting minutes for it. Stony silence, that's, that's not promising. Uh, any, any immediate thoughts on what I put there or anything else to say? Um, I guess uh, the point. Oh, I was going to say <clears throat> the point of the wish list is to uh, kind of jumpstart more use cases, or is this what was the point? Yeah, that's precisely. Because I'm it. seeing use case, and I'm I'm seeing use case, and I'm thinking of okay, a problem that let's say a service provider has in the real world or something, and then I see install a CNF. And I guess that's a problem to solve for them. Uh, if that's if that's how you're going with this, then okay. Yeah, um, I mean, it's it's actually anybody's problem will do just fine. I will take problems for developers. I'll take problems for anybody. Um, but I mean, basically, um, if we're going to produce CNFs that do people some good, then they need to be installed. And if they need to be installed, then there needs to be some best practices that make them installable. Um, and that's going to be a little confusing because I think it's hard to say what a best practice is when people haven't had too much experience of this. But on the other hand, if we work through the problem by saying, well, this is precisely what you know we're going to want to do, um, I'm going to receive I'm going to have a development team, whether it's mine or a vendor's. I'm going to receive a CNF in some form. Um, I'm going to want to spread it liberally around my network. I'm going to want to run it on clouds, um, which is obviously the starting of a CNF, which is the next phase. Um, then what's going to make that easy? And what isn't going to make that easy is that every single CNF comes with 10 pages of instructions and there is no similarity from one to the next. So best practices here, I think, would basically say, if you deliver a CNF in this way, then that CNF is easier to work with because everybody recognizes what to do with it. Okay, so, so <clears throat> for some of these that we're saying here, it seems like all of the use cases need to solve these problems. So install a CNF, start, how does CNF deal with the lifecycle events? So you're kind of saying that the use case should address 
well, it would be nice if the use case said these are issues we also want or put a high priority for them to be solved in the use yeah. case. Yeah, so some or of the some separate of, use cases. Mm -hmm. Some of these the, these are use cases. So we're describing what somebody wants to do. And I would expect one use case per rather than a use case that describes all of them. Um, and then beyond that, obviously, what we're actually trying to deliver is best practices. So a best practice is going to be better if it takes these use cases into account. Maybe it attacks one of them specifically and doesn't really touch any of the other, in which case we've only got to measure it against one. Maybe mm -hmm. it does affect more than one, in which case when you're putting a best practice together, you'd want to discuss how it relates to use case X and use case Y. But the reason mm -hmm. we've got use cases is so that we can say why a best practice is truly best. It's better than the alternatives. Um, so Yeah, so I'm looking at the, the sources. So for BGP, it seems like when they're just, someone must be describing their BGP uh, problem type thing. Uh, it seems like interoperability would be a quality they would want or, or not want. Maybe they don't care. But if they do want it, the way that they install the CNF is important. They don't want it in such a way to where uh, it doesn't work in someone else's platform or so on and so forth. And then these, so these, I, I think I get what you're doing and, and it does need to be addressed. Um, I just kind of back and forth on if these are individual use cases or not. They can, I don't care, as long as they're addressed, then um, they, they need to be addressed. So how we do it, I don't, I don't know. I think the yeah. main point is to just get the conversation started. So what, if someone already has an, a problem and they want to put it forward as a use case, then they can do that. If they don't know where to get started, they can come and look at the wish list. And then maybe they read it and go, this doesn't say enough. Maybe it should say this and they add to it or they create a new one. It's, it's to help get the conversation started and get people going on eventually creating yeah. full use case. So I, I think we may have, you, um, Ian, you said, let's put it somewhere um, outside of the notes. The discussion board could be a first start before we have anything else like a document. Um, I yeah. don't know if it's this one or if we need a new one. Um, there is one there that discusses use cases and user stories, and that wouldn't be a terrible place to sort of stick these things in. But if we've got no arguments on any of them, then it would be better if we basically had a checklist of some variety, whether that's a Trello board or something else, it doesn't really matter, so that we can actually tell how we're progressing on these things. But yes, yeah, I mean, there is that. Okay, well then, suggestion maybe we take a look and we can do this afterwards, but um, we could probably create a board inside of GitHub for projects and you can do, you can look at that. Okay. Um, I'd Tell like me. to, yeah, I'd, I'd like to start the argument going. Um, I, I think some of us might have a different idea of what a use case is. Um, most of these do not look to me like what I would call a use case. Uh, the use case is a more specific application. So mo mobile UPF sounds more like it. I think, I think the list you started to create here um, already has an opinionated breakdown of, of the use case. This is in a, in a way a step ahead. Even ideas, for example, installing a CNF versus starting it um, already assume a very specific life cycle that you know, it has to be examined per use case and to see if it's even most appropriate for it. Um, you know, what does install exactly mean? We often use words like onboarding. Uh, some aspects of the CNF might be, have to be pre-installed. Uh, starting, I'm not always exactly sure how different that might be from installing sometimes. Uh, well, let, let me be clear why I separated those two out because I think that one's quite straightforward. If I want to upgrade a CNF in service, which I think is desirable for everybody, 
then there is a big distinction between getting the software out there so that upgrade can take place and the upgrade itself. Um, so that's why I separated the two. No, I, I, I can understand the ra rationale generally. I, I feel like these are, I, I'm tempted to call these things aspects, <laughs> aspects of all use cases. All use cases yeah. would have to have some of this, assuming even that all use cases are really divided into CNFs, right? This is an issue maybe with even the name of this particular work group, right? We're assuming that all network services are decomposed to network functions that can be recomposed together in some way. Um, it's, it, to me, this is jumping, putting, <laughs> jumping a little bit too far ahead already. I, I guess I prefer to start with use cases that have to do with um, what telcos call use cases. That is actually, use case is another word in telco, I think for application <laughs> or application type. Um, yeah, and, and it's why from the outset, I've been talking about use cases and user stories. I, I would agree that right. use case sounds a little more specifically, I am trying to do a certain networking thing but a user story is telling the story of a user trying to use one of these applications. And these are stories that a user has that are indisputably necessary to actually get to the point that my CNF is on the network and working and doing useful things for me. Uh, maybe let, let me chime in and uh, discussion, Wookie speaking. Um, if you look current, uh, definition uh, of the of the use case in the template and then the few examples uh, it is actually none of uh, what was discussed it's not the application it's not uh, also a, a process oriented it's a description of a demand uh, let's say or, or of the particular situation the realistic situation which uh, brings uh, to the surface, the, the problems or the demands or the challenges we might have when we want to run the network functions in a cloud native environment. Um, so I would not um, look at them now, try to artificial or not artificially, but try to force them. They need to come from the users uh, or from the, from the stakeholders that are facing certain limitations, certain problems and describing their, their situation, their, their challenges in, in the way of, of uh, uh, description of the use case should give us as an input, uh, something to work with. To put it black and white, if number, nobody is coming up with, uh, I have this uh, situation and I have these challenges, then we should not address it even. But now I understand uh, Ian uh, trying to stimulate a bit uh, more work on the use cases so that we get these contexts and these situations um, more transparent so that we can work with them. So I would probably prefer to, to stick to uh, use cases as a sources of the, the real life scenarios uh, in which operators or developers are, are coming and seeing some obstacles. Okay, well then to take that um, start example, then when you start CNF today, how does that work? Yeah, th this is something, uh, let's say I could, uh, I, I could make an attempt to, to describe actually like um, we, we, on, we are onboarding a couple of uh, uh, CNFs or uh, prospective CNFs, uh, I call them. Um, and they indeed come with a, with a, um, in the two flavors. One flavor is um, I deliver you like a, like a CNF developer vendor, I deliver you entire stack from bottom up. Um, and then it's, it happens by some magic. <laughs> Uh, not by some magic, but by some uh, deployment uh, ways and configuration ways that uh, vendor uh, put together entire stack, including Kubernetes uh, underneath and so on. But if it is onboarding on a, on a, uh, let's say third party cloud or on a, on a let's say uh, operator managed environment, it comes indeed with the 10 or 15 on 12 pages, uh, 20 pages uh, of instructions. And, um, 
it is mostly done. Uh, it mostly boils down to uh, you know getting the helm charts, getting the artifacts in the right places, editing the values in those helm charts, um, trying repairing. Uh, it's a, a, a bit of artisan uh, manual process uh, at them, or not fully manual, but a lot of manual work involved. And then when it's deployed, uh, I mean starting. That, that's a good question. So installing and, and starting it. Um, from what I see is uh, when it's installed, it starts itself. It checks the readiness, liveliness, and uh, then it, it uh, either is in reconciliation loop, uh, uh, waiting for the other components to happen, or is simply failing. Or So there is not, not this thing like starting a CNF. Uh, well, or, all right. To, to draw a line between those two, then installing clearly involves to me, um, getting into a registry somewhere, right? You need your Helm charts in a registry. You need your... Ah, okay, yep. Right. Yeah. So th this is this is actually the most of work if, I, if I'm if i talking uh, now. I, I could think of describing this in a, in a use case format and saying this is how we, what we what we see and face today. And these are maybe some, some challenges. Uh, but you're right. So it's the first step is really understanding what the application is. Uh, these applications are in most uh, uh, of the cases of CNFs are not open source projects with uh, uh, projects with a comprehensive readme files with a, um, let's say documentation that is end user friendly or not end user but operator friendly. So they are mostly mm -hmm. done. Uh, <laughs> it's name of my daughter. Sorry, <laughs> here. Um, she used actually, I see uh, uh, who is taking the notes. So it's book actually, sorry. I need to, to change my, my name. I forgot that my daughter was having a school on my computer <laughs> sometimes earlier. Sounds good, we got it hooked. Yeah, so <laughs> you have now uh, right name. Um, so where, where was I? Uh, the applications are not uh, are mostly intended for the for the uh, service uh, professional service people of that vendor who developed application, and not for the direct uh, uh, usage uh, by by the the operator. So this is involving a lot of interactive verbal discussions in a number of of. Uh, uh, online sessions in which we are understanding, okay, why do you have these artifacts like that? Um, where are the, the, the containers? Uh, how you get them into registry? Where are the Helm charts? Are the Helm charts with the umbrella or not with the umbrella? Um, how do you deal with the CRDs uh, in those Helm charts when the Helm chart fails? Um, all, all those kind of things are part of what I would not call install. We refer to it as the onboarding, like to make CNF work. Mm first time like uh, uh, starting up and saying, hey, now it's, I'm ready to, to be configured or to accept some traffic. So this is so what I'm, we refer to onboarding and then starting is simply like uh, maybe deployment process. And uh, from that on it's managed by, by uh, means of uh, how you manage the, the normal Kubernetes application. Well, but I'm, yeah. I'm already in a kind of, uh, so improvising and making yeah. uh, making a sort of uh, a use case verbally um, yeah and, and that's, free, you're, you're, freestyle there's, there's, there's some interesting bits that are coming out there right everybody i've ever spoken to on this automatically jumps to we start it by running a helm chart which is interesting um so at least today that is best practice um and i don't see a reason why that would necessarily change we could write it down as well um, you know, it's not the only way you can start things in Kubernetes, but it does seem to be commonly assumed that when you get a CNF, it will come with a Helm chart that you run to get it going. Um, yeah, I mean, in, in our case, it's a bit different. And this is where we are debating with some of, uh, of the CNF uh, um, uh, providers, uh, because we don't uh, start it by, by uh, using Helm install, because we, we follow the GitOps process. So we started by committing its definition uh, in Git and then wait until it gets started in the reconciliation loop. And this is what most of the, uh, of the this could be also one of the use cases, actually. Uh, we we uh, tend to, to see the pattern. Most of those functions uh, is, 
I saw today, it's not, let's say, wide uh, range of them. I'm speaking on an example of three or four, and I cannot name them uh, now by name of vendor and uh, and type because they are under NDA. But uh, most of them are really made uh, for the imperative. Uh, like you sit on the com on the command line on, on some jump host and you are typing Helm install this and Helm install that and then looking what happened and then wait uh, until one part is up and then you do the, the uh, next part and you follow these 20 pages documents uh, which are in most of the cases written uh, extra or on purpose for that uh, particular installation. It's not like a very general documentation mm. because I guess most of them are uh, not yet in a, in a uh, shape and in a form to be like widely available. Like when you get, a, a, I don't know, a Office uh, 365, you get install, you get some install guide, you click and then you go through it. So they are not made yet for, for such consumption. Uh, they yeah. are mostly made for a system integration, which is on one side right to be so, on other side something that could be, uh, uh, let's say, improved with some best practices. In, indeed. So if we could ask, for instance, for installation to take that as the, sorry, for starting, rather, to take that as the example, then there's two things, and I've thrown in there that, that running multiple CNFs on a single common platform is definitely user story or best practice is a little hard to say, but, but it's a common assumption. And I think it's worth noting because it's certainly not what we find in, in today's world. But the other part of this, then I think it's undeniably a best practice that there is a single thing you do to make a CNF start. Um, the thing about GitOps is interesting because that one strikes me as um, not necessarily a part of the CNF itself, but a part of the way that you put the CNF to work in the sense that, um, and I'm going to borrow an ORAN term here because um, it, it lets me escape the, the legacy of Etsy. In, in Etsy, we had a VNF manager um, and it did a lot more for a CNF than you're ever going to need to do for Kubernetes. In ORAN, you have a thing called a DMS. Um, and I think it's a deployment management system. Mm. It, it's not so much the detail of what they think a DNS, DMS does that's important. And I don't know that it's explicitly or fully defined, but it's the idea that in order to start a CNF, then yes, you probably do need a little bit of external help to actually kick it in the right direction to begin the process. Um, and so it's reasonable to assume that there is some external component that, that does the general, you know, kicks it in the way that it expects to be kicked. Um, but we don't really have a pattern for what that is. As you say, install documents, and I know full well that Cisco is no better at this than anybody else. There, there's no pattern for this. There's no common approach for doing this. Everybody would do it differently because, you know, there's no shining example that we can take and follow. No best practice. Um, yeah, precisely that. <laughs> Uh, I, I have a nasty feeling that we're going to have to write some very basic form of CNF to just see how this could work and run some experiments and take that as feedback for our best practices. And I'm not looking forward to that because no one likes writing best uh, CNFs that they can't sell. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a fight to actually accomplish that. But um, on the other hand, if we want to work out what is best, then we're going to have to find out what is better and what is worse. Um, so I think there might be some experimentation involved. So I, I have a few we things to add here. Um, Al, just a second. Yeah. We we had a, a question added in here. Um, I don't know if you saw this, Ian. Mm -hmm. Will these use cases cover scenarios on how a CNF can be deployed, orchestrated with ONAP and other LF projects? Well, I mean, as far as I can tell, service providers don't 100% use ONAP everywhere. I mean, some do, some don't. Um, so the question is, what makes it amenable to whatever they might choose to do? But on the other hand, you know, ONAP is relatively logical in what it wants to do. It's not actually asking terribly much. So whatever we do should, yes, indeed work with ONAP. So another question here, another way of approaching it is, what does ONAP want you to do? What makes things work with ONAP? So, so we've been initiated, that... could, could somebody explain what ONAP is? 
uh, it's Please. a higher level orchestrator for networking in general. Okay. I mean, we, we also have um, these discussions and it is a question, uh, how do you transition from the VNF uh, into, into CNF uh, world? And uh, also how do you make, uh, how do you bridge over the, the period uh, of coexistence of uh, many different shapes uh, of the network functions? Um, uh, because there will be v VNFs uh, still for uh, for a number of uh, years or even you know, longer, there will be there even uh, in a real uh, scenarios there are even PNFs, physical network functions. So how we reason about that is actually a, a higher level orchestration uh, is needed, and we have also one type of of uh, orchestration uh, here is needed to connect and to manage this uh, how to say service chaining. Uh, like when you have a, for example, service consisting of the of the CNF and VNF and PNF, what is this higher order uh, orchestrator that understands the telco network setup and they can wire those three things uh, or five things together, so that they can provide the end-to-end -end service. Uh, yeah. But we struggled, uh, and then we are still in these discussions. Like, okay, but this own up or uh, or mano or or whatever uh, you use it. I, I mean, it's one form of mano, if I if I'm not uh, mistaken. Mm. Uh, they say, okay, but you know, how do you control uh, the the pod failover, uh, the scaling of the of the uh, replica set, uh, or uh, uh, these kind of uh, uh, things, and then we have to explain uh, to to people it's not anymore the role of this uh, uh, type of, of software. So you need to abstract it either on a higher level and see uh, how it fits. So I, um, what I'm pushing internally is really uh, uh, keeping that for a CNFs on the level of the um, service training uh, orchestrator when it can talk to netconf of the particular network function. And that's it. Not to deal with the deployment and redeployment of that function and, and the stuff because it, it should be, in, in, in our opinion, handled so let, in the Kubernetes. I, 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 I have to address what uh, Ian is saying, though, for this problem. Um, to me, this looks like more along user stories. And I volunteer to take what your list here and put them in. What's, you, what's called Gherkin, so given when then, so given on an operator, when I have, and you can fill in the, you know, like I when I have a BG, BGP problem or when I want to install BGP, I need to be able to call the CNF. Making it very simple so we can address these very low level steps um, that are kind of <clears throat> orthogonal to describing um, another, maybe a higher level demand that you would get with a use case where you can have scenarios and things like that. Uh, and then we can solve, we can address both sides. And Ian is wanting to address some of these basic steps that as a, someone in the real world, how they go about it's going to see enough that that's handled very nicely with a user story. As in a user story can be like two lines or one line. So we can solve this very quickly to handle what Ian's doing. We can put a, a document out there, markdown with, what people are saying at these very lower uh, <clears throat> simplistic levels or lower levels, and then everybody can be happy. You know, people can see it, know that it's captured, and um, those are separate than, say, quality, so interoperability, or some other things, which we we're kind of mixing those qualities in with steps. So, um, and then all of that being demand. So, I, 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 I can volunteer for that. Yeah, I, I would add that we talk about the, the two things we've promised ourselves we'll write are user stories, use cases, requirements, and best practices, which is arguably implementation. And normally you would find a set of design in the middle. So I think what's going to happen here is that we will write up some user stories and then somebody will have to propose a design for some of these things. Um, mm -hmm. I would argue that, for instance, the requirements of ENO to take towels you know, baby, is um, it is a consequence of a design that hasn't necessarily been made completely clear. 
um, you know, it arguably solves use cases because if you design your system in a certain way, the use cases all basically get solved by the implementation, which is ENO, to, to take one example. But to Vuk's point just a moment ago, um, you know, we have things like service chaining. How are these CNFs working with each other? How do they know where to talk to each other and so on? With things like mixing and matching PNFs, which absolutely are not going away. I don't get very far without a topper rack switch. It's a PNF um, and CNFs. I think our problem is probably a problem of Lego, which mm -hmm. is it doesn't matter what color and shape my brick is. What matters is that it's got the right nobles on it so that it connects with other bricks. And to my mind, that's where we should find ourselves ending if we're describing specifically CNFs. We might choose to go further out and describe what the Mano stack looks like in, if we consider that to be a best practice that basically makes CNFs work. But um, if we work out what a CNF looks like from the outside, um, how you relate to it, how you wire it to other things, um, then we should be able to use it with VNFs and PNFs without getting too much in detail of how those VNFs and PNFs are being looked after. Uh, hey, uh, I, I have a question here. So are you suggesting that the uh, design we should propose for the CNF means, are you suggesting that there should be some kind of a standard interfaces or the APIs for a given CNF, which using which it can be connect or talk to other CNF? I, I think that would be my take. Honestly, if you're a, again, we, we had our audiences, but if you're not the developer of the CNF, if you're not interested in making it beautifully cloud native to make it more easy to develop, more agile, if you're actually a consumer of a CNF, then the thing that matters is not, you know, what language they chose and how many containers they're running. It's things like, how does it export its logs? How do I wire its network interfaces to other network interfaces in other CNFs or other devices? this sort of thing, it, it's very much looking at it from the outside and not asking what the ingredients are, but making sure that the outside is the shape you think it should be. And we sometimes forget that when we're designing things, it's like we, we, we want to open the box and see what's inside, see what the workings are, look at those springs, they're all very shiny. But in actual fact, the outside shape is probably the more important thing to us here because that's what makes it usable. I, I'd like to suggest something that I hope will be constructive here. Um, I, I think what we need as part of the description of these use cases, and, and I agree that using a user case story is a good idea, but I would underscore specifically what the assumptions are, because there could actually be different assumptions for each of these, and best practices address those. You know, Best practices don't come in a vacuum, right? You, you might already have a platform and environment uh, with certain processes within your telco that, you know, that's what you work with. So somebody's saying, well, you're doing it wrong and this way is better. Um, well, that might be great on paper, but you still have to work with what you have. So for, for example, even the, the trivial case, apparently trivial case of installing a CNF, which I think is nothing close to trivial, uh, assume you already have an uh, inventory management system, right? Um, so you have to onboard it in a certain way with certain descriptors. You might already be working with an orchestrator, which might not be your choice. You know, if it's, say, it's ONAP, right? And ONAP has its own issues and Etsy Mano as well, and that they're still trying to understand what to do with CNFs in the first place. And my hope is that from our group, we can give recommendations that can help them move forward in some ways. But, but in any case, we don't always get to choose these environments and tool chains and middleware that, that we have to work with. So, so I think it's very important to put those assumptions, right? Thinking about, oh, it could be a Helm chart or a GitOps or, or some other kind of inventory management system and, and the processes, the, the business workflows, the operational workflows that get you to the a case where you have a CNF running, right? <laughs> Which might yeah. be part of not just that CNF in isolation, but part of the general network service that you're deploying, including site management and all these other things. So, so I, I think all of these can work for me if they have these assumptions listed with them. Otherwise, um, yeah. Let's, yeah. I, I, I just, let's one thing with the, with the assumptions this. requirement, I was going to say that given when then standard will work because 
when you write it down and then you see 17 assumptions in the given portion of the user story, and that it starts to look like, oh, this is not something that will be a best practice. This is an edge case. And, but you have it written. You're not going to know until you see this thing written out. So it's, the assumptions are in that in the user story when you write it out. Well, well, I would say should, is, yeah. <laughs> it should be yeah, but, y'all. Let's bring this back to the topic. What we had here was a request from Ian to try to kickstart adding user stories or use cases. Either one. This is to build a list so that people can get started. And then everything else we are we have already started addressing. So Tal, you you've brought up multiple times that we don't want to have assumptions. You want to get down to the base level and hold everybody accountable. These are inside of the requirements. And if your use case does not cover these things, then it, it can't be referenced from a best practice. And a best practice will not be adopted unless it has a working group use case that goes through all of the different items, including stuff like involved systems. So maybe you're already using MANA. But right now, all we're talking about is how to get started with more use cases and user stories. We want to start adding them. So if, if whether you have a simple one or I'll say a more focused, this could be from your point of view, tell a component level, this onboarding might be part of something larger but we don't wanna block anyone. If someone wants to focus on onboarding, let them do it. If someone wants to focus on something larger, great. Whatever you're wanting to contribute to, that's the point that Ian was trying to get started was let's get contributors for more use cases mm -hmm. and user stories. And I think Watson, it sounds great to start creating some set of user stories that provide the context, what, what we don't have is a template for user stories, but you're talking about something that would address stuff. But get, we want to just get started and not block anyone. Yeah, don't hold out for that template. The template will be best for us if we write a few user stories and work out what is helping to make them understandable. So, I, agree. I agree. So this might be for the user stories, the use cases, uh, wish list, Adam here, Adam somewhere. Watson, if you want to create a, a, a first set of user stories based on stuff, that sounds great. We just want to get started is the main mm -hmm. point. Everybody's been talking about it and Ian was trying to help get things started by let's at least create a list and not block people from contributing. Yeah, it's uh, actually to, to start meaningfully addressing uh, the, or, or creating a best practices, uh, we need a consensus or not a consensus, but we need a bit more context. And this context uh, is going to be built uh, uh, with a couple of use cases that uh, cover, I would say decent surface uh, for, a, for a beginning. We don't need to, to uh, paint entire picture or write entire book of every uh, edge cases and so on, but uh, at least to have a couple of, and to say, is this uh, what we are also sharing as a, as a, a real situation, as a, let's say, set of pain points, and then let us, in a, in a follow-up uh, on that, uh, start describing uh, the, the best practices or debating the best practices, if you will. So Absolutely. what I can volunteer is really uh, continuing what I did with the life cycle and maybe talking a little bit on onboarding um, to describe uh, what we are facing with and somebody can jump in and maybe correct it uh, from another angle or, or complement it. And I like we... your idea of complimenting, Vuk. So this, you added this one, um, it seems like in response to Ian talking about install. It's okay if we have multiple use cases covering the same area. Yeah, so absolutely. Someone may come up with something based on what someone else talked about, and that's okay. Use cases are not saying this is the one and only. And likewise, best practices, we may come up with multiple best practices, and then you have different options and paths. 
Do you, do we want to move on and give some time to talk about some of these other items? Um, I, I just want to add a small tangential. Um, Ian, you mentioned the fact that we might need to write CNFs and actually create something that might be difficult. So I'll just mention uh, my team is working right now on creating ORAN CNFs. Well, there'll be mock CNFs. The point is that we, we're trying to build something that we can actually orchestrate and compose. The CNFs themselves don't do anything, but they will. the intent is that they'll be fully configurable using the uh, three GPP Yang models that are uh, referenced by uh, the ORAN project. So maybe that can help. <laughs> and we're definitely using it as a place where we can play around with what we think the best practices are. So we, for example, prefer to use Kubernetes operators as a way to, to install and manage and, and do ongoing changes. Uh, mm -hmm. In any case, obviously this is Red Hat. So we're going to be doing it open source and in the open. And um, uh, when we have something to show, it might be useful for this uh, work group to look at. I'm sure that y'all have a lot of use cases and user stories, and it would be great if those could be um, maybe broken down enough to not have any anything that would be, I guess, proprietary, similar to what VUC was trying to do when talking about onboarding. Y'all probably have a lot of use cases that would be applicable outside of Red Hat, so that would be a good area. Yeah, right. we're, we're following ORAN here, so it's, it's designed to be open, yeah. yeah. Mm. And I think we, I don't think we have to build a, a fake or a real um, RAN architecture to necessarily come up with useful things. Um, you know, I'm not going to say that a router is a particularly useful thing to build, because it isn't, quite honestly. But a router that takes static routes is nevertheless doing a good proportion of what a CNF would need to do if it's forwarding traffic. They all basically have a fairly common set of problems and a lot of them would be shown up by having one of those. Similarly, a BGP speaker, if I took Go BGP and tried to make it into a CNF, would show up a lot of the common problems that we would come up with. Um, so it's possible that rather than, again, we get into some difficulty here because we all have jobs that we're paid to do. And writing an open source BGP speaker is never going to be a part of that job for most of us, at least. But on the other hand, if we can find things that are small, digestible components that we can take somewhere, just to say, well, this is representative of certain bits of what CNF is going to have to do, then we might find that it's going to work a lot faster than trying to get people to share what they're doing with their own CNFs that they're producing which to be clear is usually set in stone by the time that anyone's willing to discuss it because, oh, it's shipping now, so we can't change it. The customers are using it that way, so we can't change it. Um, I, it we, we need to compromise a little bit to find out how to get ahead of this. Otherwise, yeah, you know, we've already seen that, you know, different CNF vendors, and again, I'm not saying that we're, sh we're blameless in this, have their own patterns for doing this that may or not may not be good, but once you've released a product, they're actually kind of hard to get anyone to admit that they need changing. Let's let's uh, go ahead and move on. If anyone has any um, any items to add as far as new user ca use cases or user stories, either one. For right now, add them to this um, discussion item where we already have some listed, and then we'll move towards whatever we're going to do as far as if we migrate them over to another document, if we put them in the project board, but this one is here, please start adding them. And then if there's anything that you like, then just create a brand new discussion to focus specifically or do a PR if you're ready to go. So, um, uh, one comment, on. Taylor, if I just yeah. may regarding this uh, writing the CNF, um, I think we would have enough CNFs or CNF references to use in our discussions, debates, uh, uh, developing best practices. So I would uh, probably uh, foresee it uh, like not immediate thing we need to do, but when we have a, a comprehensive set of best practices, we could even invite uh, all interested and say, hey, can you bring up uh, the network function that would satisfy all these uh, uh, best practices or most of these best practices in a, in a form of kind of competition or something to show, okay, this is really um, 
cloud native uh, or according to the best practices of function. So I think we could create an intrinsic motivation uh, after we publish the set of, of best practices and then invite uh, openly uh, yeah, the community to, to bring up something and then show off uh, at the end. Sounds good. Um, and I'm sure we can collaborate with some other uh, groups that are have testing um, sessions about that. Do we want to talk about the 95? Do you want to go into this at all, this use case? We had a PR to add it. So mm -hmm. trying to move on to see if we can accomplish a few other things. I, I think um, the blockers around this. Yeah, uh, Jeffrey was requesting the edits on it, which I think I fulfilled. I was not coming uh, back to it since I was uh, off last week uh, and then some days before. But I remember uh, that uh, I was addressing most of the issues uh, and I'm uh, honestly either waiting for his feedback on the new text or if you go scroll down, I think there was a It looks like yeah. there's several commit suggestions from Victor. Yeah, even I think I was I was accepting some of those. They were or they are uh, all accepted. You'll have this, to click. Do you have the commit button? Uh, commit? Let me let me check that. Uh, I need to right. log into that one. But other way, uh, other way around. If you go to the uh, bottom, uh -huh. you'll see that uh, uh, one change requested uh, in the in the changes requested in, in this uh, uh, yeah, pipeline run. So if you look at this. I think I did uh, made those changes just uh, taking uh, uh, Jeffrey. Maybe we can uh, follow uh, offline. It's like I'll do a, yeah, I'm gonna just click this to let everyone recheck. And yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to follow up with you and make sure that you have access to accept these. You should be able to see this button and click commit suggestion. I just need to uh, quickly open that issue All or right. that uh, PR. And then I have it. Let's see. So I'm going to move on to a few of the other items. Um, let's see. We are going to cancel the Telcom user group May 3rd. Um, it's conflict. It's conflicting with the KubeCon day one events. And the next Telcom user group meeting will be June 7th. I suppose that means we should also maybe cancel the CNF working group for the same day. In in May, but we can come back to that. We're not here. Uh, let's see. I don't know if anyone. I'll point out a couple of things. So if if you didn't see, we merged the move of the governance items into the new governance document markdown. So this was just migrating those. And Ian, this is yours again, expanding on the best practice. I think we may have, yeah, we got a bunch of approvals. So this is cleaning up this uh, best practice document and making the language a little bit more consistent. I think you reordered. Uh, yeah, I, 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 tried to, I, I tried to reorder it a little closer to the sequence of events. I padded out each of the sections so that there's some clarity on what the sections mean. And then I just set to on the language so that we're actually, you know, when you read this in a list, it looks a little bit more like you're talking about comparable things. But yeah, nothing too exciting here. Um, I'm mostly impressed that people were approving it without complaining about it. So I, I guess we're roughly in the area of consensus. 
I wasn't expecting that, honestly. So that's a nice bonus. But unless anyone's got any objections, then I think we're about ready to the point that we could commit it. Yeah. Any objections with committing this? Mainly cleanup. And then he added all of these descriptions so that when you're coming in here, there are, of course, no best practices listed yet. But this are trying to show um, different categories. <laughs> Yes. And bear in mind, right, again, the point about this is it's better than it was. It's not perfect. You are welcome to propose more edits on it. There's no limitation to that. All right. Victor, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Um, okay. Well, probably at this point, we need to revise. Yeah, I need to revise the changes. Yeah, probably the, the major difference between the previous change and this one is like I would just remove the 80 uh, characters limitation. So now it is still modifying a few things, but um, yeah, it's covering. You've disabled it. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to click that. So you've disabled. The 80 characters. I think I just went to the wrong one. I don't know what just happened. Okay, there we go. You've disabled the character length requirement. Yep. And I, I okay. also create like a make file for like for new people just to run main instruction instead of trying to figure out the, the way to run the linter locally. So. Where one other thing I've found with that is because this is actually checked into the repo, when you push to your own branch before you make a pull request, then it runs the tests on your branch for you. Um, so you do get some feedback there as well. It should get, it, it should, any problems should come up, you know, several times before we try and commit anything. Yeah. All right. We didn't tag enough people. So I've just tagged a bunch and maybe get another set of reviews and then we can get it merged this week. Um, this one add values to the charter, the wording here, let's go. I think we need to maybe tag a few more people. The first step was, or I guess the first iteration suggested was a simple list. And I believe this was based on something like Kubernetes community or, um, are you on Lucina? I don't know if you're able to speak to this one. The reference, where this actually came from. It, this, a simple list adding values into the charter related to mission. All right, well, um, this one I think could use some more responses. There's a lot of um oh okay i see a chat message so there's oh yeah here's the references so the tests go harbor tick the some different um cncf projects there's been a lot of comments on this well, i think we may need more folks tagged So we can get it through. There you go. So the the main um, comments in here are about do we expand from a simple list and have longer explanations, and are there anything else that we want to cover? And this would be more of the with the split of the charter and the governance, the longer term tie, tie in with bigger goals, mission statement and values for the whole group. So please take a look at that and give some feedback. Um, is the PR process approval? I don't know if Bill is here. I've put in a discussion item and we're right on time. So just I will 
we need to drop. But if you can take a look at this, this discussion about trying to make the whole process for pull request be a lot faster and simpler for most items. So most items would be able to move through very quickly. And then the items which are um, need more approval and more thought before we go uh, add them would be the only ones that would have a different process or more involved process. Everything else would be part of the contributing guide. So how to get through. And there is a PR for this discussion. So you can add comments to the PR or to the discussion either place. It's been some people that have already started giving feedback. And you can see how it fits into the charter and the um, and the contributing guide. So charter and then the contributing guide. Uh, yeah, so there are a couple of points here. One is we were sort of debating about tech leads and what they do. And my proposal um, is that we basically work out a reviewing process where then we add tech leads to it to speed it up. Um, so we put something together which basically just uses community members for the minute. And then uh, we start, you, you know, we can build a role for the tech leads. We know what they're going to do because it's clearly how we get things to go moving forward. So we're not building things in advance of knowing whether they will help or not. Um, and the other one is that we don't need to get too complex just yet. If we aren't ready to build, you know, best practice baselines that we're going to put out and saying, here's our version one, then we don't need to write that down yet. Let's learn a bit more and write it down when we're a bit more certain about what we want to do. So we don't have to over-engineer this just yet. All right. Well, take a look and give us some feedback on this, and we will see you next week. Feel free to chat on Slack online. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye all. Yeah, bye. See yeah. you.